Hello, Blazer fans. I actually remembered to unmute my microphone, so it must be it must be time for a really good show because I, I finally had some vacation, and uh, now I can remember to do the simple things like unmute my microphone. Weird thing is, like it's been death by a thousand cuts today. Every little thing that wants to go wrong has gone wrong. Uh, I spent the last 10 minutes prepping for the show by taping my camera back together because it decided to fall apart right before the show today. So like the little hinge that holds it up like came undone and cracked. So now I'm like masking taping, using masking tape to get my camera locked and loaded. So if it, if it falls off during the live stream, um, it'll be a sight to see, but uh, I got it in a pretty good position for now. Hopefully the Razor support folks help me out and get me a new camera so I don't have to deal with that anymore. Um, Mr. Magoo, you're still on preview five. Why is that? I saw you were doing, uh, or maybe, no, that was that was Peter Morris, I think, that was doing um, a, uh, what do you call it, presentation. And uh, they, he ended up staying on preview five, I think, to do his presentation. But why are you still on preview five, man? You're supposed to be on the bleeding edge of things. Matter of fact, it's funny. I was um, pinged by engineering the other day about an issue on Blazor. I won't specify which one right now, but because um, I don't remember. Uh, but um, one of our engineers is like, "We have this issue," and then a few minutes later, he pings me back. He's like, "Never mind. Some guy named Mr. Magoo." Uh, submitted a pull request to fix it. So it looks like we won't have that problem. Uh, so uh, I know you're staying on top of things there, Mr. Magoo. I've, I need to get into some of the community news. I'm going to wait till next week till everybody hashes out their uh, previous six issues. And then we'll, um, we'll mess around with some of the community projects that people are doing. Um, so... Uh, Hugo Stone, Hugh, her Gustone says, uh, getting ready to use or thinking of using it in production. It's getting close. It's getting close. Um, November, actually, the next preview release should be good uh, for production on server side, I think. So that one should be the uh, RTM release. And then uh, GA will be in September. Uh, Let's see, Barnyard Chefs, uh, or Binary Chef, sorry. Binary Chefs need to install .NET Core 3, but it's only for Windows, can't use VS for Mac. Yeah, I know support's getting better. Uh, Visual Studio Code, uh, VS for Mac might not work great, but uh, Visual Studio Code might be um, uh, decent now. Uh, I haven't tried it yet, but I saw it's, I think it was on the community stand-up that um, Dan Roth was talking about the support being there at the last minute. They were working on it, and it should be good. So I want to give that a shot. Uh, Chris Santi's in the chat room. How's it going, man? Seen some good articles. Again, I'm not going to share too much community stuff today because uh, I know things are being tweaked. I know a lot of my articles, I, I put a joke uh, kind of tweet out there this week that was... Um, like all of my email this week is going to be uh, people asking why my demos from my blog posts don't work in preview six. So I've got some, some blog posts to go through and kind of touch up on. So giving everybody a chance for that. Um, so it was said that, oh, sad panda that, Auth wasn't ready for client size client side Blazor too, uh, yeah. But we we've got the baby steps, right? Baby steps getting there with the um, authentication at least on server side. I'm sure client side won't be too far behind after that. Oh, so actually .NET Core three doesn't work with the newer Mono, huh? That's interesting. Is there an issue on that? I wonder if there's an issue. Make sure if there isn't, I would make sure there's an issue posted for it. 
yes, it has been too long. So I had Beer City Code, and I did a workshop on a Friday, which meant no stream. Then I took a much needed vacation for a week. So no stream for two weeks. So uh, on preview seven, no, it's uh, actually on preview five, we're gonna update, uh, do migration to preview six here in just a few minutes. So why don't we jump over, it's been forever in chat today, but uh, it's nice to have everybody back and, and chatting with me. Uh, also 11 subs, uh, thank you very much for all the subs. Um, Actually, a brand new one by uh, D. Wheeler Jr. Uh, right before the show. I don't know if he's in chat, but right before the show, before it even started, new sub. So thanks, everybody. Yeah, kids, kids kind of change the way your work-life balance <laughs> hashes out. Um, yeah, but two weeks is, is a long time. So let's get back into it then. Let me pop over to uh, Dan Roth's blog post so we can take a look. I'm sure you um, longtime fans have taken a look at this already, but we'll, we'll just run through the list of changes. Um, some of these are pretty big. Um, and the new Razor features one, I, I think is going to cause the most uh, breaking changes uh, that I've noticed so far. So we've got the new attribute, um, uh, directive new attribute attribute directive uh, is nice you won't see any breaking changes there I don't believe but uh, the next one the code directive will and I'll explain that in a minute for those who haven't noticed what that is yet uh, key is brand new that's supposed to help with uh, the uh, diffing algorithm um, I think that's mainly for lists of things that have a primary key and maybe you're doing some CRUD ops uh, to help make sure that the view stays in sync uh, with the items that are in a list. Uh, the namespace uh, directive is going to be um, a big deal for helping with component namespaces. I know we're, we're investigating that one now at Telerik to see what we can do to make our namespaces easier. Namespaces still, though, are kind of a pain, and it's not so much the framework, it's just the complexity of building big component libraries. Um, it's just hard. Naming things is hard. And uh, I'm actually going to meme for that. Naming things is hard, guys. We, we all know that naming things is extremely difficult. All right. Uh, so the, there's also markup and functions. I think this is uh, a new way of doing like inline helpers to make them very short and simple. But that's more for Razor than it is the Blazor components. Um, so we also got the authentication for Blazor apps, but as pointed out in the chat room a few minutes ago, um, the server side Blazor looks like the only thing that is supported. So. Uh, let's see what's going on here, Mr. Magoo. Key is the one thing that will make me upgrade to preview six. Okay, so this is a pain point for you. Key is, is going to help you out. That's good to know. Um, so authentication, people have been asking for that quite a bit. I did a workshop two weeks ago. People were asking a lot about authentication. Um, it was funny, in a room full of developers, um, Ancient Coder thinks, oh, sorry. Uh, welcome to the chat and on hip coder. Thanks for the follow. Um, I was giving a workshop last week and people were asking about authentication. And then we got into the auth bit. Um, so if you haven't done the workshop yet, uh, I would recommend it just because it's a really good uh, workshop. So AKA AMS. Uh, let's see. I think I have a shortcut for this guy. Let's see if that gives you the link. If not, I need to add that to the bot. I do need to add that to the bot. Or I may have it under another shortcut, but this is the workshop. Um, so we're going through the Blazing Pizza workshop and we get to the authentication part. And I'm explaining that authentication is coming soon, but in the demo we use Twitter authentication and it should work pretty good for the workshop because most developers are on Twitter, right? And I asked for everybody to raise their hands and about 30% of the room raised their hand and said they had a Twitter account. So I kind of ran out of suggestions at that point on what to do. 
I was like, I, I don't care if you guys want to create new accounts or create one account and share it. <laughs> I don't know. I'm used to people being on Twitter these days. So anyhow, uh, it's just a fun little story about my, my workshop. Um, static uh, assets in Razor class libraries is helpful. I... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, Mr. Mugu says, what do the other 70% do for their cat pictures? No clue. Like, I, I mean, no clue what you do for cat pictures if you're not on Twitter. Facebook, maybe? I don't know. Um, so Jason.net has been pulled out of Blazor. The uh, rest of stuff is more on ASP.NET Core 3.0, so we're going to focus on Blazor stuff. We'll look at the migration steps here in just a little bit because we're going to have to actually do that in a project. Um, the attribute features. This lets us add attributes directly to um, a Razor uh, markup uh, or Blazor component markup. Um, this this will be helpful for smaller components. I still prefer to build my components with like a code behind type of approach, um, where this is a little less handy and um, it's still an, a necessary feature. Though it's nice to see it added. Um, yeah, now now that it's now that preview six out is out, it's time to go through the workshop. It's probably a good idea. Uh, I think it'll be pretty stable at this point. I think some of the bigger changes are done considering the next one's going to be an RTM release. Uh, this is a big breaking change for me. Uh, the code directive, um, it's equivalent to functions and it's been renamed. I don't know if it's just for semantic purposes or why it was done specifically, but um, I, I don't have, I, I think it's a welcome change. Uh, it's a little bit easier to, to write and um, there's a lot more than just a couple functions being put in that code block. So I think code is more appropriate uh, and it's just for Razor files, which I thought was interesting. So that's not being, um, it's not being implemented in .cshtml files. So there's a pretty big distinction between .razor and .cshtml. And I actually have a, a session about that big uh, distinction. Uh, I did it at Beer City Code. If any of you were at Beer City Code, um, uh, feedback on that session would be appreciated. But I thought it went well. My, my um, gauging the audience, just being a speaker for a while, looked like it was going over well. I didn't see people's eyes glazing over and anyone leaving the room or anything like that. So that's always a good sign. Uh, but it's a, it was a fun talk to give, and I'll be giving that one uh, quite a bit, I think. Uh, the new key directive talked about that, and it looks like this will help keep lists of items in sync with the, um, the diffing algorithm. Uh, again, I think this is something that is very important if you're doing CRUD ops because you have uh, you don't you don't want to have your uh, list of items get jumbled up by the diffing algorithm and something mistakenly taken out of the view that wasn't meant to be so that's uh, that's helpful namespace is extremely helpful uh, so now we can give our entire components uh, a common namespace and kind of override the um, the default behavior, which is if we have a component and it is in a folder, it will automatically give it a namespace and we want to be able to kind of override that behavior. So we've got the namespace directive. Um, uh, we talked about the uh, this a little bit. Um, this, this, I think, was part of a tweet that Ryan Nowak put out a couple months back. And he was asking about how people felt about doing these little functions to send back a snippet of HTML uh, or Razor markup. I, I like this approach. This is very functional, and um, I could definitely see myself using this. Uh, I don't think people use this feature too often, but it is in ASP.NET Core. Uh, let's see if I can find it real quick. But the template generation stuff is, um, let me see if I could find, maybe it's under scaffolding. 
but the scaffolding uses razor and the code that you use, the razor code that you use to build these uh, scaffolding views out is actually very complex. Um, I'm not sure if it's under MVC templating or code generation. Uh, this is actually the source code for it. That's not what I'm looking for. Um, so Telerik uses these. And I've actually worked on some of these templates for Telerik myself. And if we go to templates, this is where they are. So they actually use Razor. This used to be T4 templates. And now they are, um, let's see, Razor page. View, view generator, Bootstrap 4. And uh, if we look at the list, it's a Razor template that builds a Razor view. So you can see there's a lot of escaping and a lot of just Razor code in general in here. It's very difficult to read. And I think that this type of functional approach to building these things out will be very helpful. And uh, I think I've got delivery or something. I've got dogs barking upstairs. I hope they shut up soon. So apologize if that's coming through the microphone. They are dogs. That is what they do. Um, so let's see. We've got uh, some chats going on here. I think you guys are chatting amongst yourselves, but uh, which is awesome. I appreciate you guys coming and joining me on the show. Yes, Janescu, we will get... Oh, Port Blaze. Hey, we'll get into Blaze Port here pretty soon. Um, just going through some of the previous six changes. The directive changes, a uh, big kind of breaking change here. I'll, I'll go over these in detail. Um, I'm going to jump out of this document here in a minute and show what those actually look like in a project. So before I do that, we'll, we'll get on to the migration in a minute. I think binding is the last thing I'm going to show in the release notes here. So let's pop out of this. We'll talk about directives in a minute. Um, then we'll do some migration. Um, actually, I, want to, I don't want to close that. I want that back. Give me that back. Um, yeah, give me that guy back. We'll put that down at the bottom of the stack. Um, so Blazeport. Uh, Blazeport is something I'm going to be working on here in a few minutes. Uh, before I do, I'll explain. Uh, there is a conference coming up. Uh, this talk was submitted to Codepalooza, but it was originally developed for Build. Uh, unfortunately, Build did not pick it up, and I didn't get to do a session there. But fortunately, Codepalooza has picked it up, and so has, um, I believe, Music City Code. So two great conferences in the Midwest area. So let's see, Music City Code, Music City Tech is the umbrella of conferences that are down in uh, Nashville. And uh, Binary Chef is coming to both. So you'll get to see the talks that I've got. Um, so in Music City Code, I have, and as well in Code Palooza, I have a session called Cosmic Full Stack, Blaze, a Blazer, ML and Cosmos DB mashup. That's what we're going to be building on the show for the next couple of months. So I don't know if their schedule is out. It is not out. I've got a speaker um, uh, profile that has that, ex that session accepted. So they will probably post that pretty soon. I believe I have the workshop there as well. So uh, same as Codepalooza, I've got these um, uh, lineups at both. Uh, so you're going to be doing uh, workshops at both as well, Binary Chef. Um, okay, so they haven't released that one yet. Uh, what workshops are you doing, Binary Chef? Um, so building your first, oops, th this is the Blazing Pizza thing. We're going to, oops, oh, I, these single page apps, uh, like the Codepalooza website, can be a little troublesome uh, when you hit the back button. So we haven't quite figured that out in spas yet. So I accidentally hit back and jumped completely out of what I was looking for. And just searching, scanning for it. There I am. 
Uh, so I've got um, the pizza workshop and then this cosmic full stack uh, uh, thing I'm, I'm calling the app Blazeport and it is going to be a futuristic quote rideshare app for space travel. Just trying to do something fun. Um, and we're going to build an app that has Blazor running server side with some ML.NET and Cosmos DB handling some of the data persistence for us. That's kind of like the elevator pitch for it. Uh, we started building it a couple weeks back, but it, we really didn't do anything but set up an empty project. Um, so, uh, Bernie or Chef, you're doing some data science and deep learning, both in Python. Nice. Very nice. Uh, so I've got the Razorverse talk there as well, uh, so that'll be fun. But that's what we're going to be doing. That's what Blazeport is. Uh, it's very bare bones right now. It's pretty much file new project. Um, so uh, Electric Havoc is a fan of Cosmos DB. Uh, I have yet to actually use it, so it's going to be a little bit, a little bit of a learning experience on the show here for me. Um, but we will have some fun with it. I'm going to get into Blazeport in a minute. Uh, before we do that, uh, let's look at... Um, an older application. This is something that I was working on for some videos that I'm getting ready to produce uh, for Telerik. And I'm going to have some very short quick start guides on how to do some things. One of those things is building a, uh, just building components in general. So what I have is this for forecast um, uh, forecast component and it builds out a weather forecast and this is in preview 5. I want to show the difference between preview 5 and preview 6 so I'm going to create a couple windows here and we'll open up some side-by-side -side panels of 5 and 6 because we're going to do some migrations here in a few minutes and I just want to show the difference between uh, directives in 5 and directives in 6. And once we do that, we start actually writing some brand new code here. But I just want to show this because it's really important. Uh, these are big changes that we got this week. So that is what today's show is going to be about. Uh, speaking of today's show and upcoming schedules, I, it, it looks like I'm going to go ahead and do, uh, since I need to get Blazeport built, uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I'm planning on doing more shows. So three days a week, I'm going to try to keep that up. I uh, have a very bu busy video scheduling, uh, video recording schedule next week. Uh, so there should be plenty of content for you guys very soon. All right, so on the left-hand side, I have preview uh, five. Let's just go ahead and write that up here. It's preview five on this side. And this is preview six on this side. So this is the difference between Preview 5 and Preview 6. Let's bump some of these uh, click event handlers down so we can take a look. And you're going to notice I've got red squigglies because the older tooling isn't uh, working there. So uh, one thing we'll, you'll see is the functions block is different. Uh, it's now the code block. So that is a very important change when you're migrating. Um, I've also got this weather view. I'll show you what this does in a minute as well. Again, preview 5 is on the left, preview 6 on the right. Um, the, let's see, where are... Oh, I don't have my directives on this page. My mistake. Uh, my directives are on another example. There we go. This is one I wanted to show off. So this is a, um, a conversion calculator. So converting inches to centimeters. Uh, this is a big difference here. So if you look at the bind attributes, the bind directives, uh, they used to be bind dash value dash on input. And now they are at bind dash value and then at bind dash value colon event. So we, we've got a big change there. So that's going to be a lot of uh, component changes for people that have libraries of components and apps they're building and stuff already. So it's a pretty big change. Uh, let's see. Uh, Cosmos DB can be expensive. 
or maybe I'm using it incorrectly. I doubt that. Uh, it's probably just expensive. Uh, no offense. I am a Microsoft MVP. I'm not trying to, to hurt anybody's feelings, but uh, Azure can be a tad expensive at times. Um, I, I've, I've run up some Azure bills with my free accounts that I was pretty surprised at. Uh, so it can be it can be a little daunting at times. Um, Electric Havoc's doing a good job explaining the differences between those things, uh, but it looks like it's a better choice than SQL uh, for some things. So thanks for explaining that in the chat room, Electric Havoc, and uh, thanks for the new uh, follower, Bla Blazer. Uh, doctor, uh, I think I got that right, like doctor, but uh, a little more fun. Um, so you can see the difference between the two types of bindings. Uh, and I actually think I have an, uh, an error here. I'll fix that guy real quick. Then we'll run this and see what it looks like. Uh, this is running server side blazer. So let me undo some stuff in here. And we can save this guy. I'm going to close Preview 5, uh, the Preview 5 version. We don't need that anymore. Uh, so this is something I've been working on uh, for a little video series that's coming up. And um, we'll give it a run. Uh, this is running. Maybe it is running client side. I thought this was a server side, but it looks like I've got my... Um, Looks like the uh, linker just ran, so maybe it is client side. It doesn't really matter too much. Uh, I'm not going to show off too much of this app. It's just uh, for demo purposes and uh, doing some videos. Basically, the videos will teach you how to build whatever this is anyway. Uh, this is going to be more like training material than it is live streaming stuff, but I uh, figured I'd show it off. So it shows you how to wire up uh, a couple text boxes to do um, data binding, and these are binding both boxes to each other in real time. And as soon as you start typing, uh, you can you do an automatic conversion. And uh, it's kind of a little MVVM approach type of a thing. Uh, very simple uh, to teach people how data binding works. And it's using the brand new binding directives. So at bind value, I'm binding to the inches property, and I'm binding on the event on input so by default, it binds to on change, which would make me lose, uh, I'd have to lose focus to make the binding actually trigger. So I'm binding to on input for both inputs. And then if you look at the set uh, property, I'm just doing the conversions there. Very simple demo, but it, it gives you an idea of how data binding works in Blazor. So um, it's a good little uh, introduction to preview six. Um, and then I've got my forecast uh, demo I'm working on as well. So you can build a nice little component in a very short period of time that looks like this. Uh, and it has some features like child, uh, child component um, like template areas. Uh, it has some CSS classes that can toggle and some properties to bind. Uh, so it's a pretty simple thing to build, but it, it's also very functional as well. And I'll, I'll have some videos out later this month that details those uh, in a nice format. That's not a live format because I, I keep getting requests for those type of videos. Uh, there's some people that like the live show. There's some people that comment on the live show and say, uh, this could make a great 10 minute video, but I don't want to watch you for two hours uh, wa walking through code. And uh, that's fine. There's different audiences for different things. Um, just uh, if you're watching the live show, you're probably watching it for very different reasons. So please don't complain that it's not a one hour training course when that's not what it's intended to be. Uh, no, I'm not using CSS Builder there. It's a very simple demo for uh, people to learn how to get started with Blazor and build a, a component for the very first time. So I wouldn't lay on CSS Builder for something that simple and uh, basic training type of stuff. Um, usually the scope of user group talks. Oh, <laughs> still talking about the 
um, the data persistence stuff. C sharp to Google Sheets. She's C sharp Linux. Pretty. That's a pretty good um, uh, session material. I like that. Uh, this is not going to be a two-hour training course. It will be a uh, series of five-minute videos that will probably be about 20 minutes long. Um, so about four videos, five minutes a piece, uh, just to get people their, their kind of uh, bearings around what Blazor is and how it works um, so they can get into building Blazor stuff very quickly. Uh, there will probably be a full training course coming after the summer. Um, along with the videos I'm streaming, I'm going to start recording a full-length uh, course, Soup to Nuts. Um, don't know how that will be distributed yet. Uh, it's early in planning. I uh, don't plan on going through Pluralsight. Don't have anything against them. Just don't want to do that route. Uh, personally, and uh, not sure Udemy's might be an option. There's some other options I have, but uh, courseware is coming. Um, so very, very early into that. All right, let's get into Blazeport, and we're going to walk through migration because right now Blazeport is on version 5, preview 5. Um, again, uh, it's very early on. If you watch the first episode of this, we started with a file new project. This is server side Blazor. And uh, let me pin my Solution Explorer open. Um, I had set up a very robust SAS uh, compilation um, pipeline. And I went and added the uh, Telerik UI for Blazor to it which I still will definitely be using in Blazeport, but I'm going to delay when I add it to Blazeport because I think with all of the changes coming, um, it's probably better to postpone adding this until the preview, we pick, catch up with preview. Uh, so I'm actually going to go in to my source control and I hope I, I'm pretty sure I was running source control, I did. Um, I'm going to actually undo my changes for um, the progress Telerik stuff in here, and I will bring it back on a later show. So I'm going to bring us back, actually. I'm going to do undo the last portion of changes that I did. It's probably like the last 20 minutes of the show. Um, I was trying to add a little too much, I believe, a little too early on. And let me close all these documents out. Uh, so that should bring us back to a file new project with my SAS steps enabled, but not the progress stuff inside of it. So let's go back. And why is my Team Explorer where it is? It needs to be more accessible. There we go. And I should be on my master branch. I haven't committed this to GitHub yet either, and I will do that on the show today, I promise. And it looks like it did not undo correctly. Uh, why not? I want to undo my changes. Yes, go ahead and delete those 90 items. Uh, those got pulled in from... Uh, those got pulled in from... Uh, package Manager, Pac-Man, what do they call it these days? Libman. And it looks like it's having a hard time undoing them because of that, possibly. No, Libman is good to go. The changes have been undone there. Come on. Undo changes. Come on, Git. Yes, I want to undo those items. Uh, Git is being a pain. All right. Let's try these one at a time. Undo the changes there. <laughs> All right, let's try something different then. Let's go into SAS. And if I'm, let's try to delete them directly out of the project instead. So I'm just trying to undo some changes real quick. And I should only have, something's locking this down is what it is. 
Oh, there it goes. So bounce back here. Bootstrap vendors. Not sure why this, this isn't undoing undo changes. It's going to be a hot mess if it doesn't undo these correctly. I may just end up restarting this whole thing, which is not what I want to do, but hey. Stash and then delete? I've never had an issue with this before. Uh, let's try. Let's try to drop all, see if that'll get rid of it. Never had to do that before, interestingly enough. All right, so that actually should have done it. Thank you, Mr. Magoo. I've never had that problem. Seemed like it was just locked up. It kept, it wanted to keep those files really bad. And um, usually a little git will uh, undo that for me. And I don't know if it's a, yeah, that's possible. It could be. I could have dropped to the command line too and tried it there, but hey, we figured it out. Thank you, Mr. Magoo. Looks like you uh, came to save the day again. <laughs> um, all right, so just making sure that uh, I can clean this project and then we can start migrating this over and hopefully we didn't break too much so we can get this to work. Uh, let's see, upgrading an existing project. All uh, right, so what we need to do is first update our package refs uh, to preview six. I'm going to copy that number just in case. And let's go, let's try to do this the GUI way first. See what package, uh, NuGet package manager does. And let's try it this way. Uh, let's see here. I am on the wrong set of package sources. I need uh, nuget.org specifically. And let's see what we've got installed. Hmm. I'm not seeing the Blazor packages in here. Let's see if it's under update. It is not. So not seeing. Okay, so preview six updated. Let's. Uh, Let's take a closer look here. I've only got uh, I've only got to update to preview six because this is a client or a server side, so it's not going to have too many dependencies. It looks like it updated to preview six already uh, on its own, so we don't need to update our NuGet package. Although I did get a different number than that. Um, so I'm not sure why that is, but it looks like we'll be okay. Uh, so we need to rename all of our functions to code. So functions is going to be going to be in quite a few places, but since I wiped out most of uh, the uh, what do you call it, the boilerplate code in here, I don't think there's actually any function blocks right now. So this is a, a very bare bones app. It doesn't have anything but like a hello world page. So I don't even need to do that as I normally would. Uh, I don't think there's any real attributes in here. So it's going to be mainly um, this stuff in startup. Remove any use blazer. Use client side. I'm not using client side. So let's see how this goes. What's my reference for upgrading? Um, I'm looking at the release notes for preview six, if that answers the question correctly, I hope it does. Uh, that's the first couple paragraphs, uh, upgrade to an existing product, a project. So let's see if anything changed in here. Add server side blazer. It doesn't say anything about server side. This is very client side specific. Um, there's actually some other migration steps here as well. So, uh, oh, that's 2.2. .2. Uh, so what I'll probably end up doing, this is actually one of my preferred ways to do this. Um, let me open up another Visual Studio instance. 
So I want to make sure I've got the right um, startup.cs because it'll cause a bunch of headaches if I don't have this right. I'm just going to create a new throwaway project. File new. Uh, ignore this page. It's got some styling issues. Uh, I'll leave it web application 27. And I'm going to make sure I choose the server side uh, Blazor app. This is another way if the migration docs are not helping the way you want them to. Um, I want to specifically see the difference between client and, or the server side in 5 and server side in 6. I'm just going to do a brand new project and just kind of visually look at um, and compare the two different files here just to make sure I've got everything right. So I'm just going to look at startup CS and this is just file new project. This is everything that came with the template. This is what I have with my project. And I've taken out weather services because we don't have it in this app. Uh, that was removed on purpose. Uh, exception handling. We don't have an error page. So error pages are new. We'll put that error page there. I think we have to actually go get that. Um, that's something that's not going to be in the migration guide, I think. That is the same. Static file is the same. Routing is the same. Map Blazor Hub is the same. Fallback page, same. So we, we need to go to uh, app.razor because this actually got a change, I believe. I don't remember seeing, yeah. So app.razor got a big change. So we'll just copy this out and paste it there. So I don't think that migration step was in the guide. And now we have that corrected. And then I think that will probably do it because everything else is custom in my new app or my app versus the file new project. And it's very bare bones. Like I said, we've got uh, let's see, namespaces look like they've stayed relatively the same. Make sure there's nothing else going on in here. Uh, that should be the same. Hosts, let's check hosts just to make sure that our host file is still what it should be. Uh, that's going to be under pages and host. This is your kind of bootstrapping file. Hey, Gorn, welcome back to the show. Just doing some migrations here. Sorry, this is a little bit of boring stuff, but uh, we'll get into some more interesting stuff here soon. Um, we're still using render component async. Still the same JavaScript files and everything. Just kind of double checking my work here. I don't want to run this and have it blow up. So uh, this was this was all customized earlier in the show. I'm not using all of the uh, bootstrappy stuff because I have a custom bootstrap pipeline uh, built with SAS. If you want to see how that's set up, watch the first half of last week's show. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, there's quite a few UK folks uh, here in the chat room, so it's great to have you guys. I know it's later in the afternoon for you. Um, but we will get into some new code here in a minute. I think we're pretty much done migrating this. Let's see if it runs. We'll leave this open for a minute just in case we need it. But I didn't see any compile errors come up. And hopefully we have a new window come up here. I'm looking on, I have various monitors. I don't see it popping up yet. Got the little beach ball going. There we go, loading. And loading some more. Come on, this is server side blazer. You should be a little faster. A little faster. That's not a good sign. Oh, wait, there it goes. Hello, world. So it looks like my migration steps worked. So, Gorn, you've had some uh, issues with system.txt.json, the serializing things. And probably, I'm not, not too surprised, really. I'm um, not... Uh, saying that it's all bad i'm just saying that it's it's new system.txt.json is new newtsoft was around for a long time so i'm sure there will be a little bit of growing pains um, i'm going to close out this file new project thing that i created just to help me through migration 
Looks like migration went perfectly fine. Close all docs. Um, I have a very bare bones project right now. All I have is an index page with hello world on it. And um, let's just double check here to make sure that our bootstrap classes are working. Uh, just because we did do a custom SAS build of um, of the uh, bootstrap stuff. Uh, let's throw some divs in here. Um, I'm trying to think what we have. Oh, we'll just put a couple buttons in here. Just to, just to make sure that we're getting our, our bootstrap classes. So I'll just throw some simple stuff. Throw a secondary uh, outline warning, just some random random class in here. Just do a quick sanity check. Make sure that we've got uh, our bootstrap file uh, compiling correctly. And we'll start writing some code. Now I'm running server-side Blazor here too, so if we do run into any issues, we can actually have debugging. All right, so cool. We've got bootstrap classes. We can start building here from scratch. Um, I chose to do a full screen app for now, so there's not really anything but some margins here. You can see the body of the app. And if we dig in, there's a fluid container here. So it's just got, uh, if you look, there's some green up in the right and left hand side. Those are gutters. So just provide a little bit of spacing for this full screen app. But other than that, it's full screen. And we're going to work with that area there. Uh, we're building, I, don't, I usually do like uh, mock-ups and stuff before I build an app. If somebody's taking care of this for us. I'm going to bounce out to uh, Behance. Um, and Behance is a website for designers to put their portfolios. So I've found this uh, in somebody's portfolio, and I thought it was really cool. And it's like this Uber space app. So it's just like a space travel type of thing. And it's got uh, some stuff that we can kind of reference for some UI. I'm not going to build it exactly to this, but it does give us kind of that, um, what do you call it, uh, prototype that we can kind of glance at and get some ideas from. So we're, we're going to have some space travel stuff. Um, I'm going to want to have like some drop downs to pick uh, where you're going to and from and stuff like that. So this is kind of the general idea of what that'll look like. We'll have like a little bit of a dashboard like this. So we'll pick our... Uh, pick up location or destination. Um, we'll do some some stuff like this. So th this generally right here is what I want to build. Uh, so let's actually kind of stub out some of this stuff. And I think I'm going to try to use some of the newer uh, um, Bootstrap four. Um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Flexbox. Uh, it's Flexbox stuff. I don't know Flexbox is that well uh, to do it from scratch in Flex, Flexbox without Bootstrap. I'm sure I could figure it out. Uh, but I, I, I like uh, having a CSS framework. Um, I don't have anything against Bootstrap. I know some people are like, I don't need all that framework. Um, I've got a custom SaaS pipeline set up, so I've, I'm only using the parts of Bootstrap I want. And I actually like it for prototyping things very quickly. Uh, so we're, <laughs> oh no, we're we're coming up with new acronyms now. Now we have bi Bison, so Blazor Serialized Object Notation. <laughs> um, yeah, I I'll let you guys uh, hash that one out. I I think I'm gonna keep my hands out of that. <laughs> um, yeah, CSS frameworks are amazing. And uh, I use them all the time. Ancient Coder, you're right. Um, I don't know. People have this this weird like thing against frameworks. Like somebody was in a chat room the other day talking about Blazor, and they're 
they were saying they didn't want to use a component f library because they don't like to use frameworks. And I thought that was kind of odd because Blazor is a framework and in the context of Blazor, you're talking about not liking to use frameworks. And even Blazor is built on a framework called .NET. So it's like, where do you choose your line in the sand? Anyway, I don't want to get off on a big rant. Um, yeah, it's just a lot easier for uh, getting started and maintaining things. Uh, so we're, we'll just kind of stub this out. Um, I don't know if we quite need the Flexbox thing yet. We just want to set up some simple things. Let's see, we've got a uh, label. Um, we're going to have the start location or pickup. And these are going to be very broad, I think. It's just going to be a simple list. Um, we can actually do simple lists here, too. Uh, and we can turn these into something better later and just say, like, it's going to be Earth. So we'll, we'll kind of prototype this out. This is one of the things I like to do. It's just kind of make things really simple and then kind of add functionality as we go. I think Mars is going to be the furthest destination this whole thing. And then we'll have the moon in between, and we might add some more locations later, but for the most part, this is gonna be it. Uh, let's see, we'll do another label. I keep spelling it backwards. And then we'll have our destination, and we'll throw some other, uh, actually it be the same list of things for the destination. So that's what we're prototyping comes in really handy, is we're not gonna have different destinations, we might exclude an item that is already selected from the list above. Uh, but for the most part, that's what we want. So we can always layer those things in earlier and make the UX better as we go along. Um, we can also change these from labels to other things too when we want to. Uh, so it will be time until uh, trip. I'm just going to put time until trip. I don't know if I'm going to do like the whole rideshare thing and like schedule like um, if something is going to pick you up at a certain time or let you schedule ahead like with a calendar and stuff instead. So this is just a rough like estimate of what I want to build. I'm not going to build it to a T exactly uh, the way it's done here. It's going to look quite different as well. It's just kind of a, an idea guideline. Uh, that I'm using. Uh, price and trip uh, trip time, that would be nice to have too. So we'll have total price. And trip time. So these are some of the display elements that I want to have. And we'll, have, we'll eventually add some drop-down boxes here. And then uh, these things will probably be calculated. And uh, sometimes what I like to do uh, if I'm prototyping things out uh, is put something like this in. Uh, this is just a quick comment that I wrote. It says, these are going to be calculated fields. And then these might be my UI elements that I select up here. Just kind of gives me an idea of how to build this as I go along. Uh, I'm just going to rerun that. I know it's not going to look like much. Uh, oh, did I do another label type? Yep. Thank you. Nice eye there, Mr. Magoo. I don't know why I keep tr um, transposing that, but. One thing I love about Visual Studio is when I change that, it also changes the end tag. And uh, there we go. We've got Hello World. We've got, uh, we still have the Welcome to Your New App. And then it's kind of dropping these here. Um, let's go ahead and make a list that we can bind to. So let's do at code down here. Remember, these are at code now. It's going to take me a while to remember to do that instead of functions. Um, and we could just do a simple array to get started. Let's do string. We're going to do new array of strings. Uh, we'll just call it locations. 
for now, and this will just return a new array of strings that is our locations. So we can have the Earth, the Moon, and these will eventually be database calls to get this stuff. Uh, right now we just have three fields. I have some ideas on how I might structure this. Um, these will actually get fed into a machine learning um, thing later on. Uh, formatting is still terrible in, <laughs> in Razor files. Why does it do this? Uh, let's just put it all one line. Nope, not that one. So let's, uh, yeah, they clean that up proper anyway. Um, so it, um, these will end up being in a database eventually, but there's going to be a lot of other data around them, and there's going to be more locations. And these will get fed into a machine learning algorithm that is currently uh, modeled after taxis. So we obviously don't have taxis. We have spaceships traveling much further. So we're going to fool around with numbers and things, but what, what will happen is it will look at the data and say the Earth is in a position and Mars is in a position and then find the distance between those two. And then uh, when we choose these, we'll have a trip distance that will send to the machine learning algorithm that will give us the trip time and price and all that good stuff. So uh, that this is all baby steps. We're just prototyping things out to see how we want them to look. And I think what we want to do here is actually make a drop down box. Um, I'm also going to kill this for now. This hello world thing, we don't need that. We're just kind of hashing out the UI and how we want that to look. And once we get that done, uh, we're building out uh, kind of these. Uh, where did my page go? I got, I think I closed out my concept page, but once we get that, you know, this kind of stuff figured out, we'll, we'll put some headings and things in there, make it look nice and stuff like that. We'll add some menus and things like that. We just want to get something built though. Uh, we need a drop-down box and um, there is the input select component that comes with the Blazor framework. Um, I don't know if I'm going to take it out as far as Venus. Um, I think I'm going to keep it somewhat. I know this is not very realistic, but I want to keep it somewhat realistic and say that Mars is going to be the furthest we're going to travel. And I may put some fake locations in between, like um, satellite type of locations, like uh, space stations and things that you can, you can potentially visit to keep it within this realm uh, where it's, we're not traveling, yeah, space stations <laughs> or asteroids. We can put fun stuff in here. And then, uh, of course, people can customize this on GitHub too. Uh, but the, the reason for this is I have a machine learning uh, data set that I'm working with that wouldn't scale, I believe, um, because the way planets are, the distances are, they're very, um, the distances aren't very linear. So I would have to either change all of the machine learning data because it's based on taxi routes uh, or just keep it all relative. And I think this is fairly relative if we do this and add um, some locations between the moon and Mars. Uh, to where they're all kind of relative to one another, or linear, I mean, linear with each other. So anyway, it's going down a rabbit hole, but we will, we will add some more locations. Uh, the main thing is just getting um, some things set up here. I'm trying to remember how to use the input select. Um, we need to set a, I'm trying to remember the property names here, the value, and then we have a value expression. 
So the value is actually going to be the selected value. Um, and it looks like, let's see if we can do it to just a string, but uh, we, we need selected uh, pickup location. And I'm pretty verbose with things that I name. Um, we'll give it no default for now. Just leave this as is. There we go. And it reformatted this. It's still, this is why I like the code behind approach, because it, it likes to format things, and I don't care for it that way. Um, bind. I think we can just use bind still. And so, you know, it keeps throwing a dash in there. We'll just do bind value, uh, make it happy. Bind value equals at uh, selected pickup location. And then it's been a while since I've done one of these input uh, boxes. I'm trying to remember what the list is derived from. I think we actually just do for each in here. And then we say for each item in locations. And then we have um, This is going to be a select list what, what option, right? Is it an option? Options. So it should just be an options tab. Uh, thanks, uh, Chris. I'm trying to remember these things that are, some things are specific to Blazor, some are not. Uh, there's a little bit of mix of regular HTML and some Blazor in here. So I'm trying to remember exactly what these are, but this should get us started. Eventually, this will be a Telerik UI for Blazor dropdown component, which has uh, the reason I'll be using that eventually, and it'll be a couple episodes before we, we get there. Um, and I'm not purposely trying to make like reasons to use this. There's actually a really, really good reason I want to use it. So I'm going to go to Telerik.com. I'll just show you what will be added eventually. It's just uh, something I've been hashing out in my uh, brainstorming sessions here. We have a drop-down list component. And the drop-down list component, I'll be using it on Blazeport because it has... Um, let's see. I actually want... I actually want demos. So I don't want to go to documentation. I want demos. So I can actually show what this thing looks like. This will eventually be replaced by the Telerik one because Telerik has um, templates. And when we have our drop-down list with templates, I can put pictures inside of those select items. And I can have... Um, pictures of the earth and moon and stuff like that in there. And then we also have a header and footer feature, which makes it look really nice. So we can put um, like item counts and all kinds of cool stuff in here. So that eventually it'll transform uh, away from this input select into, um, is it option without the S? Can't remember. Can't remember my HTML basics. It's pretty bad. Um, Actually, the editor would probably help us with this, and uh, I'm just being ignorant to it. So let's see if that actually works. If it does, I actually might be surprised here. Uh, there's also, I think I forgot the value. Um, the value, uh, what do you call it? I did. So there should be option, and it should also have value here. So if we did, is it select? Yeah. <laughs> So just typing out t a select, this is why I, I forget these things. So I'm so lazy. I just fall back on the editor for it. But it should be in this format. So we should have value. And that should also be item. And this will change when we actually make this an object. So yeah, that is cheating. Uh, so if you, if, you're, if you haven't seen Visual Studio too much, done a lot of HTML in Visual Studio, the way I did that is I typed in select, which is the HTML element. Actually, I need the opening bracket, I believe. Select. 
So you can see IntelliSense comes up, and when I hit Tab twice, it'll actually fill in and stub out um, that select box for me. And you probably will see me do this from time to time. It does it with other stuff too, like unordered lists and things. Um, I think it even does tables for data tables. Yeah, so it gets you going. And uh, yeah, snippets are awesome. And uh, that select one helped me out a little bit there. Um, I actually need to rerun this again. I'm not sure why I have debugging enabled at this time because it's really there's nothing nothing that's going to break. So uh, it's probably being a little slow because I'm unnecessarily running the debugger. And live streaming does eat up quite a bit of CPU. Uh, oh, okay. So I don't have an edit context. So this actually needs to be, since I'm using an input select and I'm not using, um, so I'm not using the HTML select like this. I'm using the input select and input select comes with some bonus features uh, because it's an actual Blazor component, but you also need to put it inside of an edit form. And an edit form actually needs, um, I think it actually needs uh, a form, uh, what do you call it, an object to kind of bind to. Let's see if I actually have to have all this. Uh, let's control F5 so it'll go a little faster. But let's see if just wrapping it in edit form does the trick. And no, it does not. So I actually need to supply a model and set the edit context and everything. Um, so I need a class and I'll just do it here really quick. And I don't have a name for it yet. I'll just call it my form. So the edit form, this is kind of um, a dependency issue here. So the input select depends on a cascading parameter that comes from edit form. Edit form requires a, um, an object to bind to. And uh, we don't have any objects to, for it to bind to yet. Uh, actually, the select selected location would end up being in here. Uh, so let's do that. And I, I'm using my shortcuts again to prop tab tab. Um, yeah, Visual Studio doesn't help us at all with this. It's it's hitting the compiler. So Mr. Magoo is like, why doesn't Visual Studio t tell us we're missing these things? Um, so now that'll be selected location. And now my edit form is now a edit context. So edit context or model that we set. Sets the context explicitly. We set the model. The context should resolve on its own. And let's see if that actually did it. And then, nope. Form is a type, which is not valid. Oh, I actually need a new one up. It's goofy. Um, so I need uh, my form. Um, yeah, we'll default this to a new form. I'm just trying to get through the basic requirements here. They're a little bit more than I expected. So we actually need an instance, not just the type. And then our um, binding value will then be at form dot selected location like that. See if that did the trick. 
Um, I'm gonna control F5 instead of running it there. Oh, if you pass the edit context, you don't need to provide a model. I think this is, yeah, that worked. That's where we would end up, I think, at the end of the day. Uh, once we have an actual form that we're going to build and all that, just go ahead and stub it out now, let it go. So we met the basic requirements for that. Um, what we can do is move this form tag down. And what's nice about the edit form is it does provide the, um, it does provide a, uh, what do you call it, uh, validation and stuff out of the box. So it's worth going, at, going ahead and adding that. And we can go ahead and throw our label inside the edit form as well. Uh, holding down Alt, hitting your arrow keys will move your code around like that if you're not used to seeing that. Um, and we need a selected destination. So we'll do selected destination. And I didn't hit anything, and it just decided to compile on its own. Don't know why it was doing that. And we'll add another form here, like that. So now we have our pickup, and um, the build keeps kicking off randomly. I don't know if you guys see that. Uh, it keeps doing this on its own. So I might as well pin it so it doesn't keep popping up on me. Um, I'm doing nothing but typing code, and it just keeps firing this off for some reason. Uh, unless I have a key stuck somewhere, and I don't realize it, but I don't think so. So now we have uh, the two drop-down lists. So we got a good start there. Uh, we're not really doing a, um, like a cascading drop-down yet, so we wouldn't want to select earth to earth or mars to mars we'll do that later uh is it doing a live rebuild i didn't know that was enabled so if i make a change let's do a change and hit save and see what it does i didn't think that was one of the capabilities yet or maybe i'm just used to working on the client side and it it's surprising me because i'm not used to that um i guess that wasn't a uh, code change so it didn't do anything um so we have our locations, we have a simple form, and we're doing some very basic uh, form data binding here. We have our drop downs, and let's see, uh, let's make sure that the selected values are actually working. So let's write those out. Uh, we'll just do one. I think if one is working, they're both working. Form, selected. Uh, location just to make sure that when we select something from that drop down box it's actually working the build's not kicking off now so I don't know what that was all about uh, let's try let's see if I refresh if it kicks off a build did not so I'm not I'm not running a debug or anything so I don't know why it was doing that we'll try go ahead and run it in debug mode I, it's baffling me right now because I was just typing and I kept seeing this pinned window keep popping up. So it was doing this while I'm trying to type and I'm like, I didn't kick off that build. So, oh, cannot copy some file, something. File is locked by IIS worker process. Thank you, IIS. So let's just kill IS completely because it's hanging on to something. And we'll control F5 again. Let's see if that does the trick. I guess it was in a retry. All right. So there's Moon, Mars. So our data binding is working. So that's good. So I did get that right. So um, we added a form, very simple form, called it my form for now. We'll give it a name later. Uh, we created this edit form, and then in the edit form, we have our label, and then input select, and then we're saying bind to the value from the selected location. So we provide the locations as an array of things, 
and then it actually just binds to a single value. Um, that was that was one thing that always threw me on MVC when I was learning that back a long time ago is that it actually has two different fields for the actual selected versus the list of things it binds to. Um, what I'm used to actually seeing in a, in there, there isn't a functionality like this in Blazor is there's no way to say, give me data from a source and just bind it in here. And that's where the Telerik UI stuff will come in handy later. So we'll just give it a data source to bind to and what properties on that data source. And then we'll have a field uh, that we use as our, our actual selected value. And so we've got that. Um, these are going to be calculated, so we don't have any uh, UI elements to add in there. So let's see what we've got going on on this page. And then we've got, I stopped that, so we don't have retry going on. Um, pick up, location, destination, trips. Um, and then I think that's about all we want on this page for now. There's going to be other fields. I have a GitHub repo that has the machine learning thing in it. And I think we're going to provide other uh, elements too. Um, let's see if this is yep, taxi, taxi fare. I would probably need to migrate this and update it too. Uh, but this is my taxi fare prediction and this service has a data structure of a trip. Um, so we're going to have uh, rate codes, passenger counts. Uh, actually, rate code can be um, taken from time of day, things like that. It's, uh, it has to deal with like traffic and stuff. Uh, we may set that as a constant thing. Uh, trip distance. Uh, payment type can affect um, how your uh, price comes out. We may set that as a fixed rate as well, but passenger count is going to be something that we want to add. Uh, so these are going to be additional fields that, um, that don't show up in the, the mock-up that I, I borrowed from Behance. Um, so give credit where credit's due. Uh, this is by Mo, S Mo Sla, uh out of Egypt. And uh, we're just kind of basing it off this idea. But we, I've got other fields I want to add to this eventually. And they're coming from this taxi prediction service that I've uh, used for from the ASP.NET ML.NET docs. Um, so we'll also have like vendors too. So... Uh, there's no fixed vendor names, they're just IDs in this, so we can have fun stuff and come up with uh, different vendors. Uh, a vendor, for example, would be, if you're booking an airline, it'd be Delta or United, and uh, we'll, we'll be able to have that option in our app. Uh, we can come up with some fun um, space travel agencies uh, to add as well. So this is a step in the right direction. Um, another thing I'd like to have is a place to kind of uh, list out the different destinations and locations and facts about uh, the destinations and things. So that's something that we could probably work on. Uh, so we'll, what we'll do is we'll transform this string into some kind of an object of location information. Um, so we don't have anything under data yet. Uh, let's go ahead and add a model in here. Uh, took your suggestion for .NET Core 3 working VS Code in a Linux VM. Not perfect, but at least you can experiment with it. It's a good start. Uh, sorry, Mac. Um, Mac support's always probably going to be last on the list. It's just not the primary audience for .NET developers yet. In my opinion, uh, the I know the .NET team and the Visual Studio team um, is working very hard on more uh, Visual or sorry uh, more Mac support. 
So that story will improve over time. It's not like they're ignoring uh, Mac users. So uh, it, it is an initiative uh, that I'm aware of at Microsoft is to improve that. Um, so let's call this location details. All right, so we'll, we'll call this location details. It's going to be kind of a model for our location information. Uh, we're really building this full stack app from scratch here. We don't have any real data to start with. Um, all we have is kind of that sketch that I've showed a few times. Um, so we're, we're just going to kind of wing it and uh, come up with some ideas here. Um, I'm just going to add an ID property here because I know eventually these will be database-driven things. Uh, we want to have string. Uh, I didn't use my shortcut. There we go. String of uh, location name. And then uh, we probably don't need to say location on all of these, actually. We just say ID, a name description and then we can start filling these things in inside of a database eventually um, let's see name description I'm not sure what else I need right now I know we'll we'll probably add some other things later so let's go ahead and move on with that then we can go back in here and we'll just set up something simple in here. Let's say on init. So I'm going to set up an init function here and just say on init. We'll just do regular now. Right now we won't do an asynchronous. Uh, we don't have a database yet, so it doesn't make sense. And we will build out some destinations with a little more info than what we have here. So locations will end up being a set of objects. Um, let's go ahead and make that change now. So this is going to stop working. It's not going to compile for a few minutes while we fix this guy up. We'll say uh, new um, location details. And actually, this is going to come from data dot location details. Uh, not using putting using statement in there yet. I will being lazy, and uh, we'll call this locations like that. And then we need to actually build that out now. Uh, before we were doing just a simple um, string list of things that we were binding. Now we're going to actually create some objects in here. So we need to say that locations is a new list of locations. Whoops, uh, I better, better add that using statement or I'm going to keep fumbling on that Use, using. I'm trying to get used to a new keyboard. I picked a silent keyboard that um, oh, we want location details actually. I picked the silent keyboard because I, I hammer away at my keys. You can still probably hear them on the microphone, but it's uh, much quieter than it was. Uh, so let's do a new list of things. Um, we'll do a new location details. We'll just go ahead and hash these out. We want ID equals, we'll do zero based here, name, earth, we'll get these built out and then we'll move them into another file and then eventually we'll move them up to a database. Um, Actually, we can be super duper lazy. 
and we'll just do a quick copy and paste. We got lots of red underscores in here. I'm sure they'll go away soon. So, all right, ID one. Two, and this will be Mars. And then we've got errors everywhere still. So the last call needs to be to array, because we did set that as an array. That hopefully will, there we go. So it was angry about the type that whole time. Uh, now we have locations, we are binding those locations differently now. So this actually needs to be uh, name. Um, actually, I want the value to be the ID. Uh, that's probably more appropriate. And then we want to do that. So now we're binding the ID as the selected value. And then the name. So we may go back to a database and hit it based on that ID, something like that. So that, I, that should actually fix, um, I, nope, this needs to be I, uh, int now, because the selected item is now an int type. And that should do it. So now we actually have some real data that we're binding to, even though it's not coming from any type of persistent source. Um, it's still binding to some objects. Hey, how's it going, man? Cody joining us. Uh, oh, it's still writing that out, so it's zero. Um, oh, that's not data binding anymore, though. To see if I'm getting an error. I am. So I, I did break that. Int does not support. Input select does not support the type. Uh, right. So I guess you cannot bind an integer value to input select. Interesting. I did not know that. So this can't be an integer value is what it's telling me. Huh. Input select does not support int 32. So that actually has to bind to a string. So I imagine we could make it to string here. I'm not even sure we need an ID like that, but usually that's, in my past experience, that's how Ah, so Chris, you've run into this before, like uh, it l honestly wants, wow, it doesn't like ints. Uh, I got different error this time. Now it's still the same error. Input select does not support int32. Oh, it's still, I still have int as the type. I don't know if I have to do that to string. Actually, let's remove that and see what it does. Um, it should actually automatically convert this for us, but then we have to parse it back once we do use it. So this is why live streams, I think, are very essential to uh, learning resources, because you always get the clean version of everything. There we go. Um, when, uh, when you look at things like Pluralsight and other um, formal training resources is you don't see things get tripped up like that. Uh, so this has to be a string, regardless of what type, well, I can't say what type, it, it may support other types, but it looks like it wants a string specifically. And I wasn't really aware of that, so I went ahead and bound it to an ID and then I, when I changed this to an ID to match that it was an integer, um, it, it, it 
didn't like that. So what I'm imagining here is that since this is just HTML, this value is going to end up being a string at the end of the day, no matter what type you pump into this. And there's no type conversion that maps it back properly. So it's always going to be string no matter what. And then it's going to be up to you to parse it back uh, once you decide to use it. So if I, imp if I submit this form and I want to use this ID as an actual integer, then I need to parse that when I'm submitting the form. Uh, if it needs to be mapped back to some sort of object, then I would need to do that mapping myself. Uh, so you can only bind strings or enum with the standard select input. I um, wasn't even sure that or aware that enums worked. So, oh, so we've got, let's take a look at the example. Uh, Chris has linked us to a nice example here. And this is the actual source code for the input component. Uh, so they did build in uh, an enum. Uh, so it does do enums, which is uh, something that I, I wouldn't expect to work by default, but looks like enums map as well. And uh, there we go. We can do strings or enums. Um, so we've got that thing there. Um, I'm going to try something else real quick here too. And I don't know if it works in here or not, but one thing you can, um, you can do in, oh wait, it's going to be key value pair. I don't have these set up as a key value pair. I was going to show another example of something you can do that's fun with a for each but it requires a key value pair instead. I don't have that set up right now. This is just, um, you, you could do destructuring with this and you could set up a, um, let's give it a try. I was talking about it, might as well do it. Uh, destructure in C sharp. This is a newer feature to C sharp. Destructuring assignment. Um, I meant to get the documentation, not Stack Overflow, but uh, let's see. C sharp seven destructuring. There's actually a. Uh, I want documentation. Come on, D. C sharp. Sorry, deconstructor is what I meant, not destructure, deconstructor. Uh, you can use deconstructors. And nope, that's not it either. Let's see if I can find this. Yeah, I know I can deconstruct a tuple. I want just a regular, there we go. You can set deconstruct like that. So you can come into your class. See if I can get this to work. So th this is actually pretty cool if this does work. I know it works in some Razor scenarios and not others. So um, I, I know how to show a way that it does work though. So we can say void D, uh, what's the keyword again? Deconstruct, yeah, public void deconstruct. Then we need to give it some outs. We'll just copy this. So we can we can actually set these to um, output variables. And we can say name out string last name. Uh, actually, this is going to be an int. And then we can say ID is going to be ID and name equals name and last name. Oh, I don't want last name, I want description. Description. Like that. And what is 
is it not happy with here? Why is that not happy? Oh, I'm doing it as an object. These need to be semicolons. My bad. These are individual assignments, not to an object. So we can actually tell it how to deconstruct this thing. And then uh, what we can do is when we, for each like this, we can say uh, a tuple, a tuple, however you want to call it, say ID, comma, name, like that. Uh, let's see if this lets us do it. ID and name. And it doesn't like that. Cannot infer deconstructed variable. Let me try to rebuild. It might be a compiler issue. All right, so maybe this is a bad example. <laughs> this is not working. Um, you can do this. I'm not sure what exactly I'm doing wrong, but Oh, I might need my, I might need to save, uh, no, var. I thought you could do them on a for each like this. Why isn't that working? They're actually really handy because the way they operate, you can do exclusions. Uh, I have an example of this somewhere. This is hurting me, my heart. I know I've done this before. Um, oh, shoot. Let's try searching this real quick. So it's uh, oops, tuple. Deconstruction with for each. Um, it works if you have a dictionary, which is probably why it's not working for me right now. You can actually do it with a dictionary out of the box, and it just works. Um, this this is a little outdated here. It's actually the question is how to do it. Uh, it works out of the box now. You used to have to map it yourself, but it should work. It's an open issue. Um, oh, you might have got it right there. Um, S M A B SAM UK. Uh, you actually, you might have it. There's, let's see if this does it. That was it. So I didn't, you have to have an equal number um, because the actual function call, if we look at the signature for it, thank you for that, uh, there's actually three output variables that need to be satisfied uh, for, for this. So what's cool is we don't have to specify the last one. We just need to specify that it, there's an, um, a parameter, but we don't have to name it or anything. We can use this underscore to throw it away. And then uh, we can just map it like that versus uh, this syntax here. Not that one's better than the other. I just kind of wanted to show that uh, that feature off. It's pretty cool. Um, I think where it does not work is when you actually bind it. You can't use the bind attribute or the bind. Um, it's not attributes, a bind. Um, what do you call it? <laughs> directives, sorry. I'm trying to get the naming here right. You can't use it with a bind directive because it's trying to set that variable back. Uh, yeah, so you, can, you can't use it with a bind directive, but since we're just writing it out to um, HTML directly, we can use it here. Uh, so th these are actually pretty cool. And that's how you create one yourself. Um, if you have a key value pair, you get this for free. 
So if this was a key value pair, uh, you could actually say it uh, with the two, um, you could say key and value, and you get it out of there for free. Uh, if you want to write them yourself, you can say it like this. You can also, also overload these. So I could take this and duplicate that. And I could overload this and take out the description if I didn't want to force people to use that underscored um, thing to throw that value away. And uh, that would work the same as well. So that's pretty handy. Uh, it can clean up your code a little bit. So I, I, I kind of like this, uh, the way it's written. It's pretty cool. So that's a little tip for the day anyway. It's a little handy shortcut that you can use is deconstructing. It's a newer feature. C Sharp 7, I think, it got added and then it's been, um, it's been expanded on a little bit since then. All right, so we messed around with some input boxes here. Uh, we'll move this. Um, we'll move this out to a service next, and we can put that in a database in maybe a future episode here. Um, let's go ahead and create a folder. New folder, services. Uh, let's see, new item. create a location service, and uh, this may change naming-wise eventually, too. And we're just kind of prototyping as we go here. This is the fun thing about building uh, material for talks and stuff, is we don't have to build to any kind of spec or anything, so it's just kind of live brainstorming and, and seeing what works and what, what doesn't. Um, we need a method here. Uh, let's see, public. Uh, get locations. Oh, we need to return something. Um, I'm going to return a list of location uh, details. Oh, I don't think that worked right. It should have been details with an S, which means I'm going to get... When I hit control period, I get really lazy on it. It created a whole class for me I don't want. Right there. Whoops, wrong spot. All right, so we're just going to create, uh, we need to name this guy, get locations. These nested, um, these nested brackets are throwing me off. I know I've got too many or something. It won't auto complete either to get them out of there. Uh, let's just do something really quick to make this a little more sane. We're going to return a new list of location details. And why is it? Oh, I've made it a property. Or no, it's not a property. What is it doing? Uh, what am I doing? Oh my gosh, I see what I'm doing. Jeez, I must be getting tired put my parameters in the wrong spot. Trying to live code and think sometimes is a little difficult. And now I can take that off. And 
this is now a list. Uh, what is it doing here? Yeah, let's get rid of that. And now I should be in a better shape. Too many brackets. Still too many. Still too many. Nope. Here we go. <laughs> uh, let's see here. So this one should be semicolon. Then we're good to go, right? There we go. Copying and pasting is hard. Oh, we still are missing one. There we go. And one more. <laughs> All right. Those nested brackets are throwing me off big time. Uh, so we can just return that. We'll just move that up. And then we need to inject a service now. So we'll do some dependency injection to get that in there. So under startup, we want to add. Um, so this is going to be add scoped, especially because we are on server side Blazor. We don't, well, uh, we'll do add scoped for now. It actually would work either way. The planet Mars? Can you just say the planet Mars? I'm not sure what you mean by that one. Uh, in the locations, the, the title could be anything we want. Um, not sure if I'm getting that question right. Uh, let's see. We want a service, a uh, location service. And then we can inject that. We'll make it all asynchronous and all that good stuff later on. We actually do database calls. So we've got our service. We just need to inject it. That inject. And then it is going to be a, uh, we actually need to do using statement here. So well, using services inject location service. There we go. And we're not using that anywhere yet. We will replace all of this with our service now. And we need our function call, get locations. We'll send that back to an array. We should be good to go there. Is, isn't it useful to have sample data being expected length? An expected length. I'm not not quite sure. Still don't know what, what, what exactly the point is. Sorry, I'm maybe streaming too long today and I'm just kind of dull and not getting it, but I'm not quite sure. Um, we're going to slowly like move this into something that is realistic. So maybe I'm just not as concerned with whatever it is. And I still kind of, yeah, I don't know. Um, Bang up time. I don't know if that's a bot command to see how long I've been running, but we've been running since 12. It's now almost two, so two hours of streaming so far. Uh, we'll probably wrap this up here. Oh, oh, okay. The TB. I got you. I got you. My bad. I see what you're saying now. I, I wasn't thinking the description field. I was thinking you were talking about the name. Uh, yeah, the description field is a, is a little odd, maybe. Uh, and then we'll it, it'll add some variation to it in case we want to test that value out. Um, I got you now. So we're just kind of making this a little more. Oops, that's not a planet. <laughs> we could add unit tests and things in here too. I think might be to your point a little more. Oops, the Mars. And we'll go lowercase with that, make it. I'll actually grab some descriptions offline 
there's actually some good ones out there. Um, but yeah, I, I got you now. That's that's a little, little more uh, valuable. What we'll probably add to this as well is like images, stuff like that. Uh, maybe several kinds of images. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I got gotcha. you. Mars, Mars, the candy. Um, but we moved we moved it out to service now. So this is uh, we could actually lambda this out too. We don't. Um, yeah, I'll keep it because it's not returning anything. I'll keep it that way. Go ahead and rerun this guy one more time, then we'll wrap up. We'll just do a quick review of what we did. We're, we're starting simple. We're going to do more streaming next week and really move this along. Yeah, I, I got you the description. I would really like just being so dull, like uh, the name. Why would you name it that? So, yeah, we've got. Uh, so it's up and running. It's still working. Uh, we're pulling the data now from a service, which we can then swap out later uh, for a database or something. So it's it's heading in the right direction. It's very simple so far. Um, we'll get the UI kind of sorted out here later, uh, move these things around a little bit, make it uh, figure out how we want to make the actual interface, um, and then set some... We'll set up some data bindings so uh, you can't select things that have already been selected to. So if we select, say, Earth, then it disappears from the selection on the right. So we'll do a little cascading uh, drop-down effect here soon, too. So that'll be some future things. We'll add some pages next time around as well. So we'll have Home, then we'll add a menu bar out um, where we can view all of the locations. We'll throw those in, like, some cards. Uh, so we'll build like a card interface out and then we'll add, you know, images of the earth and moon, uh, all that good stuff and just make it look like a real app here pretty soon. I'm just kind of getting some basics up. Um, I was figuring that some people might be new to Blazor and not have seen some of these things before. So I was trying to get some ideas hashed out around UI and then we'll, we'll kind of build out some more of the marketing pages that would come with an app, uh, such as like showing all the locations. Um, we've actually got a similar app here. So I, I'm going to pull from a couple different places and I, I'm wrapping up now. So I won't go back into code, but what I will do is I'll say, uh, this is going to be one, just one page of many. We've got a reference here that we're using. Um, we could make it a responsive mobile app and put in some of these views. Uh, but mainly right now, we want to have this dashboard view. And we will probably have, um, we'll probably have like a sign in and stuff like that as well. Uh, we are on server side Blazor, so we could use the authentication features that just got baked in. Um, so we might do that. So we'll have a sign-in page. Uh, so we have sign-in page. We'll do desktop version of that um, and a mobile one. Uh, we'll have that dashboard page uh, that we're working on now, stuff like that. And then I also have another place for inspiration here. And this is at Telerik.com. Uh, Telerik has a great demo app written in MVC, which is somewhat similar as well. So I'll pull up our MVC demos at uh, uh, Telerik.com. Demos.Telerik.com is an easy way to find it. Here, I'll put this in the chat uh, so we can find that. Uh, thanks. I'm glad you guys learned some stuff. Uh, hopefully that the, the uh, deconstruction was new for some folks. Um, but anyhow, the uh, demos.Telerik.com slash MVC, there's this trip expert app, and we'll, we'll model our app a little bit after this as well. So we've got this idea and this idea. We'll mash these guys up. But what I wanted to show is we have home and we have destinations. And this is gonna be very similar to what we're building um, next, I think. We'll, uh, we'll take those 
destinations that you know we have earth moon and mars right now we'll add some more but we'll we'll card those out and then you can see where that data will come in handy mm -hmm. so we'll have uh, earth description um, i don't know if we'll be able to show a price quite yet but we can view details so we can do like a master detail view have some nice images and things like that longer descriptions um, and we can we can even build out you know stuff like this eventually so there's there's definitely more ideas than just putting a couple drop downs on a page so hopefully you guys tune in for building out more features like these uh, and these in the next couple shows uh, I plan to do this again on Monday at noon and I, I will try to uh, get a little more of an agenda together as to what I plan on building next uh, as we move along. It's kind of uh, been a busy week of planning. I just came back from vacation, so there's um, a lot of planning with um, video series and things that are coming uh, for Telerik. So it's been a, been a very, very busy work week for me. So I didn't have a lot of prep time today. It was pretty much uh, solving some last minute camera issues with a little duct tape, literally, um, and uh, hopping on the air. So uh, hopefully it's uh, a good start to something fun and we'll keep working on it. So we'll see some of you Monday at noon uh, Eastern time. So I'm on the West Coast, uh, sorry, East Coast. <laughs> uh, East Coast, so Eastern time. Um, we can also do a raid here if we got uh, somebody that we can jump into. Uh, let's see, so who can we find that is online now that we can jump into? 25 viewers, thank you all for viewing today. Uh, really appreciate everybody coming on the stream, especially after it's been offline for a while. It's nice to have you all back. And I'll, tr I'll post that new schedule up as soon as possible, too. Uh, let's see here. We got... I wonder if Cody is getting ready to jump off. Sorry, I'm looking through streams here. I know Cody is... Um, let's jump over to Clark. I think Clark stays on a little bit later. Uh, let's Let me jump into... Actually, let me, let me see what Cody is doing and if he's going to be on for much longer. Uh, so he started at 2, so it looks like he might have bumped his show to be after mine. Um, so it would be a good idea to raid him. He's a good dude. Uh, we'll go ahead and bounce over to his show with a raid. Uh, let's see, how do I spell his handle here? It's C L. W. All right, so we'll go ahead and jump over into his stream. He works for Twilio. He does similar um, advocacy type of role that I do. Really nice guy. Uh, I got to hang out with him at Build uh, this year. So let's go ahead and raid him, and we'll see you all on Monday. So we are jumping on to Cody's stream in three two, one, let's go say hi to Cody, guys. Charbonneau here. We've got a number of folks joining over from Edge Stream. I'll take it. Um, Ancient Coder, welcome, friends. Uh, for those joining, this is Zero to Hero. We are super, super, super excited to be lighting up the stream. The goal here is to connect with newer developers and to, and to help them along this, this developer journey they've got going on here. So we are leveling up ourselves. We are helping to level up others. We're going to have a good time while we do it. 
And we're going to listen to some copyright free tropical vibes, courtesy of Spotify. Thank you so much. <laughs> Let's jump back into it. So uh, I, I was just getting logged into Hacker Rank. For those who don't know, uh, this is one of the sites that I use every now and again when I need to just ensure that I know what the hell I'm talking about because it happens that, you know, you do this for so long that you forget. And so, um, you know, you come to Hacker Rank, you do a couple of the challenges. They've got some nice points and all the things you can earn, and that's great. Um, and so we're going to have some fun today with 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 Hacker Rank. Now, let me stop for a second. Ed Charbonneau is calling out 